Did you know these 10 facts about Cade Cunningham? Make sure to stay until the end to find out all 10. Cade Cunningham, the most recent number one overall selection in the NBA draft. He was taken by the Detroit Pistons after just one year in college, yet is already one of the most highly anticipated rookies in the league. However, there's still so much more we don't know about him yet. But in today's video, we're going to be going over 10 of the most interesting facts that you probably didn't know about Cade Cunningham. So be sure to stick around until the end of the video to find out what Cade thinks is his biggest strength as well. Now, let's jump right in. Coming in at number 10, Cade Cunningham decided to take his talents to Oklahoma State the second he was out of high school. While I'm sure he had a ton of offers on the table at the time of that decision, at the end of the day, he thought that Oklahoma State would be the best location and fit for him as a basketball player and as a student. Because of his commitment to the school, Cade became the first five-star basketball recruit to head to the school dating back to 2012 when Marcus Smart committed to them. Cade was a terrific catch for the school as his presence immediately turned them into contenders throughout the season despite coming up short in the NCAA tournament. Still though, it's pretty shocking that somebody like Cunningham would opt to go to a school that very few five-star recruits seem to head over to. Maybe we'll see this start to become a trend with future top recruits, or maybe they'll just continue to head on down to Duke or Kentucky. Next up at number 9, Cade's father used to be a pretty talented football player back in his playing days. His dad, Keith Cunningham, was one of the biggest influences on his life as a basketball player. He was always by his side throughout his life, and it's safe to say that he obtained his agility and athleticism from his dad. Keith didn't end up playing for the NFL or anything like that, but he was a talented player for Texas Tech during his youthful years. Keith has mentioned that it's a dream of his to see his son Cade excel at all the things he wasn't able to do, and luckily he was able to witness that just a little while ago when Cade was officially drafted to the NBA. Now we move on to number 8. Remember how we said it was weird for a 5-star athlete to suddenly choose a smaller school? Well, we have the answer why right here. Cade has an older brother by the name of Cannon, who's currently 9 years older than him. Cannon was a very sought-after talent during his basketball days in college as he played for SMU. During his time with the school, he ended up surpassing the school record for games played by a student. Then, after his college career finished up, he played a season of professional basketball over in Poland. After that, he ended up deciding that playing just wasn't for him, so he began a career coaching the sport. Then, out of nowhere, Cannon became an assistant coach for the Oklahoma State Cowboys in the year 2019, just months before Cade chose to commit there. Really, that must have been a dream situation for Cade, who got to not only learn and be the main talent on a lesser known team, but he got to work out and learn from one of the role models in his life. Coming in at number 7, did you know that Cade has an adorable daughter? That's right. He welcomed his beautiful daughter Riley into the world at the young age of 17. Kate has mentioned how he's always trying to better himself and fight through tough times for his daughter to help give her a better life. Riley normally stays with Kate's parents when he's off at school, but he flies down to see her every chance he gets. If you were able to tune into the recent NBA draft, you'd have seen the incredible relationship that Kate has with his young daughter. However, there is absolutely zero information regarding his significant other, which is perfectly reasonable. Whether or not they're still together or chose to not share any other private information, it's completely up to them. It's still nice to see, though, how much effort Cade puts into making his daughter's life as good as possible. Next up at number 6, Cade was phenomenal during his high school basketball days. Now, this is probably common knowledge to most considering he was just drafted to the NBA, but he was still incredible throughout his four years there. In 2020, Cunningham was awarded for his stellar play on the court by being named the Naismith Prep Player of the Year. Because of this, he was the unanimous number one recruit out of high school and was listed at five stars like we mentioned earlier. Cade was also thrown onto the McDonald's All-American squad because of his dominance on the court. He started out this insane high school run over at Bowie High School in his hometown of Arlington, Texas. However, he didn't spend his full four years there. Instead, he transferred over to Montverde Academy in Florida, and this is when his play really took a massive jump, and he began to reel in all those awards that we just mentioned. 
This Montverde Academy team during Cade's senior season ended up going down as one of the greatest years in history by a high school team. It's hard to ignore the fact that Cade is probably the biggest reason for that accomplishment. I'm sure Montverde was thrilled when they heard the announcement that a top-rated recruit would be transferring over to their school. And there's a reason that he was a top-rated recruit as well. But in Cade's opinion, his biggest strength is a bit different from what we think it is. Stick around to the end of the video to find out what he believes that biggest strength is. Moving on to number 5, Cunningham was a massive contributor when the USA was able to win the 2019 FIBA Under-19 Basketball World Cup. The competition took place in Heraklion, Greece and spanned a couple weeks. However, no team ended up being any match for the US as they cruised throughout the tournament before knocking off Mali by a score of 93-79 to in the finals. Cade was a big factor in their championship here, but he wasn't the only big name player who happened to be on that roster. For example, Tyrese Halliburton was another star player on this squad, and we all know he was drafted early in the first round a season ago by the Sacramento Kings. There aren't many players out there who can get an invite to compete in international competitions like that at such a young age, but Cade was one of those guys. Their gold medal that year ended up going down as the seventh title the U.S. has grabbed in the under-19 category. Given how much talent is flowing through the college scene right now, you can imagine that the under-19 squad is going to collect another gold medal soon. It's just a matter of time before another generational type of player steps to the plate now that Cade is gone. Next up at number 4, when Cade first thought about making the transfer from Bowie to Montverde Academy, his mother wasn't on board at all. In fact, she refused to let him go at first because she wasn't convinced that he'd be able to take care of himself down there. However, after a little time, she ended up telling herself that her son was ready and Cade ended up heading down there. And not only did he excel on the basketball court, but he was able to keep himself together incredibly well despite living on his own at such a young age. And speaking of his mother, Cade often talks about his love for her whenever he gets the chance, saying that she's always been his rock and stabilizer when he faces tough times. The two share a very special bond that's made it through so many obstacles throughout their lives. It's great to see them doing well and having everything work itself out. Coming in at number 3, Cade was able to take home the Oscar Robertson National Player of the Week award in his first and only season with Oklahoma State. The reason he was given this honor was because of a fantastic game he had against Oklahoma. The young point guard led the way for his school, dropping a career-high 40 points and getting 11 rebounds to help eke out a victory in overtime. The score ended up being 94-90 and likely wouldn't have been close at all had Cade not flipped on that scoring switch. While that may have been one of the few times he brought home the award, Cunningham had a few other fantastic performances that went under the radar. This includes a game where he scored 29 points with 13 of them coming in the final 90 seconds of the ball game. The insane scoring stretch down the final minute and a half helped Oklahoma State knock off Oral Roberts by a score of 83-78. Now we're on to number two. Despite being the number one overall pick in the NBA draft and arguably a generational type of basketball player, Cade has admitted that he has a couple of flaws he needs to work on. He appeared on JJ Reddick's podcast during the offseason, and JJ asked him what he felt were his biggest weaknesses. Cade took some time to think about his answer before listing two of them. The first was his defense, but not on ball defense, rather off ball defense. He said his goal is to be constantly locked in on the court, even if his matchup is nowhere near the basketball at the moment. He said he wants to improve his mental awareness and be able to help his team out defensively even when he isn't involved directly. And for the Detroit Pistons, this was probably exactly the answer that they wanted to hear. Having a young and exciting scorer talk about how he wants to vastly improve on defense and help his team out in any way he can is a great guy to have on your roster. Next, he moved on to his second weakness, which he feels is his turnovers. A lot of people have critiqued Cade when it comes to his turnovers, mostly because he averaged four of them a game during his college season. However, he had a 29.1% usage rate that year at Oklahoma State, which is likely the cause of those numbers. Assuming he isn't the only member of Detroit touching the basketball offensively this upcoming season, there's no doubt that he can clean those numbers up. 
Cade said that he's been working on getting tighter handles while also trying to be more decisive in his decision making. Though, let's not talk just about his weaknesses. That'll take us to number one. Cade believes his biggest strength is his ability to elevate his teammates. Yep, we just talked about what Cade feels is his biggest weakness, so it's only right now to talk about his biggest strengths as a player. Cunningham's personality truly showed with the way he answered this question. Many people love to talk about a part of their game that they find the best, while Cade opted to talk about his impact on the team instead. You can tell that all the fame and respect he's garnered around the world hasn't gotten to him at all. For somebody that's set up to be a franchise point guard and a leader for the Pistons, being a team player is precisely what you're looking for. I personally can't wait to see Cade lace him up and get out on the court next season. He's definitely going to be one of the most exciting players to watch for a long time coming. That just about does it for this video on the most interesting facts about Cade Cunningham. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe because it really helps out this channel. Also, remember to smash that bell icon so that you never miss another video. We've got some crazy stuff coming your way in the future that you don't want to miss out on.